Join the stars of the Ancient Aliens TV show, Eric Von Doniken, as he returns to Manchester after an amazing response to his last presentation. David Childress will guide you through the evidence left behind. Mike Barrow will take you to other worlds, where Nick Pope will present the real X-Files. Paula Harris will share incredible testimonies. It's time to believe and raise consciousness. Join like-minded souls on Saturday, June 23rd, 2018 for Awakening. What do you believe? and welcome to another edition of The Moore Show. I'm your host, Kevin Moore, and on today's show, I'm about to be joined by my guest, Courtney Amerson. Now, Courtney joined me whilst filming for my documentary, They Call Us Channelers. Now, just to give you a bit of background on Courtney Amerson, she began her path as a spiritual seeker at a young age, progressing to the point that she began to channel information which created her first book, Teachings from God. Since then, she has worked single-mindedly on getting these teachings out to the public, not only through the work of her book, but expanding into sharing her insights on her social media platforms. Now, Teachings from God has given Courtney the inspiration and tools to create the life that excites her, and more than anything, she wants to inspire you to do the same. So enjoy my interview with Courtney. Okay, I'm currently joined here with Courtney Amerson. Courtney, thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for it's, having me back on. It's great to have you back on. Now, you came on The More Show. Mm -hmm. When was that, 2016? 2016, it was about a year ago. A year and a half ago, I would say. Was it? Was it yeah, a year and a half? it was, yeah. Okay, it feels more like two I know, years ago. I know, I know. It's been a while. And How different was life then? so different so different and uh when i first came on that was the very beginning of the journey too so <clears throat> it was very fresh i it was you know one of the first times that i was really coming out and speaking about the whole experience right so we're going to link our interview uh with courtney just below in the description below and that had around twenty five thousand views mm -hmm. your first interview yeah, which crazy. is fantastic fantastic and you've just finished your next book. Mm -hmm. So just tell us what stage that's at. So I just finished the, the editing for the second book. So um, yeah, round one of the editing is done. And then the next step is going through it with, uh, with Hannah, who's my professional editor. I got to meet her actually. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, he yeah. got to that meet her. so cool. Yep, yeah. yep. And um, yeah, just get, getting that done and then then it's a process after that but i'm really really excited to release the second one it's a continuation of the first one so we've got so much to speak about right here right now um do you want to touch on the second book just at all just in the direction it's gone because i sure. was uh, mis i misinformed myself i think because i saw that you were releasing videos on your youtube channel which we'll link just below in the description and there was a lot of videos on there where you were having people sending questions and mm -hmm. then you were channeling the answers but it's much right. more than that isn't this yeah, book yeah it's more than that so midway through the book i had this idea wouldn't it be cool to um, I had this vision that I wanted people to be a part of the book and I wanted it to be more real time so that it wasn't like two years after me writing it that people would start to get the content so I thought I'll ask people to send in the questions yeah. and then I'll channel them um, live and then I'll record that and put it up on YouTube so people have been part of the entire journey that's so cool <laughs> yeah so it's super cool, but it's more about, I think it's more about the human experience and it's more about, um, you know, we touched a lot upon the light in the first one and, um, you know, who we are as human beings, what we came here to do. And, um, that's more, you know, I think the first one was very foundational and the second one is building upon that and then using our tools, um, in the current times that we're in. So it talks more about the... Um, divisiveness that is happening right. and um, you know emotions contrast like really the in-depth stuff that's challenging us right now 
And um, I think a lot of that uh, interplayed with my own experience too in the past yeah. couple of years and just feeling feeling the depth of that. So, so there's a lot about um, like anxiety and stuff like that because it related to me, but I thought I need to that's great. You need to use that in the in the content too. So you feel that some things have come out in the second book that are relatable to your experience as well. Yes. Which is going to help a lot of people yes. who are going through yes. anxiety or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I, I included it too. And the funny part about it is I was experiencing it, but then people were sending questions in about it too. So it's it was a perfect thing and. Um, I'm excited about it because I think it's mm. going to relate to people in a more personal way. And it feels like, uh, you know, a guidebook in a sense that we can, we can open up to it, to any page and, and utilize that information. Which is us. the same as the first same book. Same as the first one. Yeah. Yeah. You could take that book mm -hmm. and open it up to any page. And I've got the first book just here right now. Um, and it's the same with the second book. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, so how did you bring that through? So, so if it wasn't people's questions they were sending in, what was the process of this second book? And mm -hmm. is that the same as the first book in a sense? Yeah, it is the same as the first one. I, the way that I'm treating this, it's just a continuation, you know, it's the information just continues to come out. So, you know, if the first couple hundred pages of that was just me like channeling, you know, typing away on my computer, see what comes out. And, um, you know, that's sort of just how it works. <laughs> I hear that with a lot of channelers because yeah. I'm on the, do uh, the journey right now to film my documentary, which you're part of. They call us channelers. And even though they're deep trance channelers, some of them, it's all done with that process of just sitting in front of the typewriter mm -hmm. and away they go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Totally automatic. And, you know, some of that interplays with my own experience, you know, at that time. And this goes back to 2015 when I s sort of started working on it a bit. Yeah. Um, but only in the last, I would say, six months that I was really more dedicated to getting it finished. Um, but I would say this one is much more human, much more just uh, in the depth of the human experience and uh, giving us a lot of tools, a lot of really practical human tools to use. Yeah. Was you surprised what came out in the second book as well? Yes, I think I was in a sense. There was um, a lot of information about actually su super fascinating about the, the our physical planet and the different layers of the planet um, and the consciousness that is held within each of those layers. Wow. So the core and uh, the crust and everything in between and those different <laughs> things that are sort of storehouses of, of humanity's consciousness and also super interesting the earth itself <laughs> we could geek out over this for a while but right, right. but the the earth itself has its own consciousness as well so these different things are interplaying with humanity right now and that's part of uh so-called ascension process that we're going through right now is too there's things that we're moving through um that feels uncomfortable and part of that is the old information Absolutely. I mean, that's fascinating, that is. It's almost like saying that, well, this is saying that everything has consciousness. Consciousness is experiencing itself in every single form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's so, I, yeah, that part did, uh, I think, surprise me. And then as I moved forward and people started sending in questions to me, you know, their questions were really fascinating, too, you know, talking yeah. about uh, pets and what happens when we so-called die and all these interesting things. So it's really, it's That's cool. incredible. That's yeah. so amazing. That is so amazing. And I'll just say this. I mean, I know, you know, when I interviewed you that first time, I never got a chance to read the book. And it was only on my way to you from Chicago that I got a chance to, you know, skim through the book. And your first book is amazing. It is so uh, in-depth. I've just got to say that. Um, you know, if people, you know, I think this this is, you know, the light information, not quite, uh, it's, it's quite, you know, it's quite deep stuff, mm -hmm. but we didn't seem, I don't know if we captured that on the first interview mm -hmm. so much. We talked more about my experience from yeah. what I remember, um, yeah. and we did do a channeling as well in that yes, first we one. Did. But yeah, this, that experience was so pure and untouched, and that's what is really unique, I think, about that first book too, is that... I was just so in that 
presence when I wrote it that, yeah. you know, the, the depth of it is really, people feel that. Now, when did you start to write the first book? Um, it was when I was 16, so... And it was published when? It was published uh, about December, December, no, yeah, January-ish of, of 2016. Right. So, yeah, it took a couple of years. It did take, but this one's been, this second one's been much quicker. Yeah, the second one has been a, just a whirlwind, sort of. Right. Um, yeah, the, most of the information came out in the past year-ish. Um, but my focus is different, you know. I'm sort of mm. living my life and then doing this on the side, in a sense. It's still very, very much part of me. But um, it, it's not the immersion experience that the first one was, for sure. The first one, um, I was in a different place. I, yeah. was, I was in that space. And so it felt more... Um, I don't want to say pure, but I want to say it was, you know, it was, it was raw, you know, it was like the most unfiltered thing. Mm. Yeah. And so I think, I think the focus, you know, for the second book also shifted a tiny bit when my focus changed as well. Yes. And, um, it's not as much, uh, the, the broadness of the life experience and, um, us as human beings, but, you know, more, like I said, just humanity in our day to day life and how are we creating, you yeah. know, in a way that, um, best suits us. Absolutely. Now, uh, you're 21 now, uh, mm -hmm. 22 in January. Mm -hmm. So not far away from that. Um, obviously still very young, one of the youngest channelers that I think I know, um, and we'll get into just to, to, to the whole channeling phenomena just very shortly, just to touch on that. Um, but, you know, having done the documentary with you so far, and you're featuring over two of the documentaries, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's why we're filming quite a bit of content, you did say in one of the channelings, when I asked you that question, why so young, uh, you did say what, what came through was simple, really, that you're here to help your own generation. Mm -hmm. I think I've felt that from the start too, that, you know, and, and it shows up in my passions too, mm -hmm. because everything that I'm doing right now, I want my generation to be a part of because there's, people are so lost, you know, people are following this track and they don't really know why. And it's driven by, um, society. It's driven by our, uh, education here and, um, people's, you know, families and parents and stuff. And so people get really, really lost. And I don't really notice that as much until I have that contrast of, you know, hanging out with other people, you know, friends and such that didn't have that same exposure it must to things. Be so different for, the, for them and for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I'll talk about meditation. You know, people didn't even get introduced to meditation until their 30s. I'm thinking, how can you, like, that's so different. That's not even in my scope of re reality I don't know so I think like the exposure um just you know a bit of nudge and you know yeah. even just telling my friends about things that I'm doing yeah. is so helpful and I think that's just come with myself getting more um comfortable with what I do and I'm, I'm very much comfortable in what I do now so you, I, you I really are it. I can honestly say that because having spent this time with you and your mom uh, I see what a love and support you've got from all your friends, right? Mm -hmm. And and your and your parents as well. And I think you 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 would have needed that in this life. You needed these parents mm -hmm. to to nurture this side, mm -hmm. you know, this, this this gift. And I think many others that that are in the same boat as you have had the same nurturing as well. Um, yeah. Do you, do you think there will be? Well, what do you? I mean, do, is there any label that you class yourself as, or do you hate those labels? <laughs> <laughs> I hate labels, <laughs> like yeah. in all versions of labels. I yeah. I don't like them, and the reason why is because they separate us. And and I already, you know, when people put labels on myself, um, I try to clarify, you know, in the nicest way that I can, you know, yeah. because. Um, even just, you know, when we were on our walk yesterday and we met this this guy on the trail and, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, he said to us that if he were to have the chance to redo his life and that was saying, you know, that he didn't have any time left, that he was 76 and he couldn't do anything left, you know, his life is over. And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> Go and do it right now. So it's sort of like that that sort of thing for me, you know, that 
um, it's not over till it's over. <laughs> I so remember that conversation, yeah. and it was almost like, oh, we, we were supposed both to suppose hear that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can get the words out. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and and God, the source, oneness, it talks through us in so many ways. That was just one way it communicated with us yesterday. That was mm-hmm. the universe communicating with us, wasn't it? And through you to Him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I just think like some people need to hear those kind of messages. And it doesn't take much either. It just takes sort of a nudge, you know, you're just saying one thing to somebody. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I didn't really think about it that way. Right. I should do that. Or, right, absolutely. You know, and, um, you know, just something to, oh, that's really important for me to note here for yourself is that, you know, you're, you know, you, you've been giving readings as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as your work has evolved, your readings has evolved. Mm-hmm. What, what's the sort of readings that you do right now? That has shifted a little bit, too, since the beginning. And, um, yeah, in the very beginning when I started writing my book, I was really doing readings almost at that same time. So I've been doing them for a long time Mm -hmm. now. So it's crazy to think about. I mean, probably worked with hundreds and hundreds of people at this point. Can't count them, but uh, Mm -hmm. a lot of people from around the world. And um, they have evolved in the sense that, you know, people... I think in the beginning it felt more like um, I was connecting to that source energy and that source energy was moving through me and connecting with them. And now I feel that it's it's equally the flavor of, of their soul that yeah. comes through. And it feels it feels very much like a very personal, like one-on-one type of experience. So I, I just tell people I'm checking out, you know, talk about whatever you want it's between you and your soul and um you know i'm not going to remember this so just (laughs) say whatever the heck you want yeah and um and um people feel um beyond the words they they actually feel the experience and um so the readings have changed in the sense that um it it unlocks that that door for people right. to, to move deeper into themselves. I, and maybe this comes from my intention as well, but I want people to learn how to do this for themselves. So it's not just about booking a reading with me and getting answers about themselves. It's it's about the, the deepening into themselves so that they can tune into their own guidance system. So that's how it has evolved a lot and um you know i think the direction has been very recently about tuning into the physical body and and they help people in a one-on-one reading with doing that and so when you feel pain or discomfort or conflict it's residing somewhere in your physical being and so they'll go there they'll show you what's happening there and um you can come in with you can come in with any uh, issue or any conflict and it resolves, <laughs> it resolves. And it, it, it takes hardly any time at all too, because um, you know, people go into that space where time is no longer and healing can, can happen. But it's it's beyond words. It's really an experience. That, that's incredible, and, and most and a lot of your clients as well. What they, fifty, sixty plus, some of them as well. You know, I've worked with uh, yeah, I've worked with all different ages actually. Um, in the very beginning of my journey, you know, there was there was younger people that came to me, um, and uh, it it is r- more rare. I will say that it is more mm-hmm. rare. But but again, I have friends that are younger too, and they know what I do. And, uh, you know, I channel for them sometimes, too. So, um, you know, there is that exposure to them as well. But I would say that it's it's usually older, older people. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, I my presumption was a little bit, well, you know, would coming for a reading with someone younger put them off? But that's completely the opposite, isn't it? <laughs> it's completely the opposite. Yeah. It's been completely the mm. opposite. Yeah. Because um, I think people might make assumptions that, uh, you know, if you're older and you take up channeling, it might seem like, uh, I don't know, people make all sorts of assumptions. Like maybe you're trying to, a uh, money-making scheme or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, trying to rip somebody off, you know, mm-hmm. who knows, <laughs> who knows. But, but people do assume, assume things like that. Um, but for myself, like starting this at age 16, and they think, you know, you haven't even lived life yet, so... Uh, you know, they, they, they experience it and that's sort of the validation. But 
um yeah. yeah, well, I've seen the depth and breadth of the information that's coming through you, having done the documentary, or almost finished filming it with you, and uh, it's 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 really uh, amazing stuff. It's really in depth stuff, and it's really uh, stuff that's needed right now, mm -hmm. you know. And um, it's just you know, uh, it, it it's impressed me because. Um, well, you just don't know what to expect sometimes, do you? Mm -hmm. when, when you when you first connect with someone and you're doing this work, right. and and we've always talked about intermittently, you know, using discretion as well in in who we choose to align our work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and that's the the biggest lesson that I say that has come through me in this entire thing is is that I mean we are our own greatest teachers, and so if we can tune into that guidance system within us that wisdom within us that's timeless and um you know w we're connected to all that is so we have we are the conduit to that so that that's what i do but i'm not, no different from anyone else in the sense that everyone can do that so that's you know that's the focus with the book that's the focus with the readings that's the focus with like everything that i do <laughs> absolutely and 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 you were mentioning the the, the emotions before and mm -hmm. how we don't listen to our body and when you know if we want to know what something's whether something's wrong or right for us then it, you know go within how mm -hmm. does it feel how does it feel yeah not what you think right because this is so limited this is so limited in what it can provide for us but the the body does you know it does give feedback. It does. So if we're, you know, in the beginning to it, it takes a little bit of um, a time to adjust mm -hmm. to how your body communicates. But um, for me now, like I'm so sensitive that I almost, you know, it's hard for me to even go against the grain without making myself sick. I, I'm, I have to go in the flow because yes. I, I know what is in alignment and what isn't. Absolutely. And and I always say to people, you know, I've said this to you so many times, you, you know the English word now, there's no free tickets, Yeah. right? You know, we've, we've all got our issues we're working on. And most of the channels that I've seen, they've all got their issues that they're still working on. Mm -hmm. You know, as a, so, so, so we've all, you know, we're, there's, there's, this is not to, for, you, for them to look upon you as something, you know, some, some uh, profit, <laughs> yeah, right. right, as they used to. This is, you know, a human being having a human experience, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know? so uh, true. But, but with a gift that that's maybe you've done this in many past lives that's mm -hmm. why it's easier to bring this gift out in this life mm -hmm. well i think for everybody you know something that is very developed within them you know any kind of talent or so-called gift mm. um is something that you've de been developing for much longer than this lifetime and whether you call it past or whether you call it now or whatever you want to call it you know it, there, there's development you see that there's an evolution in that yeah. Um, you know, any young talents that you see on TV, you know, little, little kids that are like singing, like <laughs> right, yeah. amazing, yeah. Or, you know, or whatever it is. Where did that talent is. come from? Yeah, yeah. Where did it come from? You, you just can't write that off no. as, you know, they, they had no training or whatever. Yeah. So it kind of felt like that with this for me. Yeah. Um, but everybody has their own, their own thing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, um, you know, just going back to what we were saying before as well, a, a lot of the channels that I've seen, you know, they, they woke up, you know, in late 30s, early 40s, 50s, yeah, um, and they've had to go through a lot, mm -hmm. you know, to get to that point. Uh, it just seems that, you know, you chose to come here now uh, with, uh, with wanting some, you know, it to be accelerated. You didn't need to go. You've, I guess I'm saying you've just done it before. I guess what that's, mm -hmm. that, that's what it feels mm -hmm. like for me anyway. I think it's a progression, you know, I think it's like yeah. you get to a point where you learn some things and that becomes a little bit easier, but then there's something else that's more challenging. It's, you know, it's an, mm. it's a progression always. True. So you look at this area of my life that mm. I'm doing and mm -hmm. showcasing and mm -hmm. it looks really easy and effortless because it is, but then you look at other aspects that are really challenging me. So it's, you know, there's never, it's never going to be everything is uh, just flowing super easily. Nope. So My stomach there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, well, where would you see your work going? Where would you like to take your work? Or are you just going in the present moment in the flow? I'm going in the present moment because I, I think if I knew, I would be very attached to whatever that outcome was. Oh, yeah. Um, but... 
you know, of course I want to spread it to people, not, not for myself, not for my own self necessarily. It will help me for my own self. But, but again, it's like the information. I just think it, it helps people like people need to experience that because here's the thing, you know, I work with people one-on-one -on -one and I see that they're getting so caught up in the silliest little things. And that's, that's what humans do. I do the same thing. But it takes very, very little to get that person back on track 20 minutes into a reading and they're already like taking a deep breath like, oh, it's that simple, <laughs> really? It's that simple. Yeah. So I think like why, you know, I, I need to spread it for that reason is that um, if people can just get nudged in that direction, you're already in the path of least resistance. And then it's it's much easier to uncover that stuff, you know? It's, of course, it's a progression of awakening experience and moments, but yeah. And we can all channel. Yeah. What is channeling to you? I think it's just being in the flow of your highest expression. Um, I don't see channeling as just sitting here and, uh, you know, so-called channeling source energy. I don't, I, don't, I don't see it in that box necessarily. I used to when I first learned about it, but now I see it as, you know, an artist or a musician or um, anything, a gymnast, uh, whatever it is. It's those kind of expressions um, that uh, sort of, you know, it's that feeling when time passes, when you're, you're in that flow and time just passes and you, you don't know what happened. <laughs> um, and uh, you, you access qualities that are beyond you in a sense, like beyond this body and beyond what you've learned mm. um, in your human life. And, I, you know, people don't really explain that. It's like, oh, I painted this, you know. They don't necessarily talk about where it came from or where they think it came from. They just created something. So that's why I talk about like taking the weirdness out of channeling. That's why I talk about it because it's, I see it in every area of the life experience. So that's why I want to talk about it as the life experience instead of as this sort of niche, like new age thing. Um, mm. Mm. So th that's how I view it though, because I see, I see people everywhere that are doing amazing things and you know, the, I'm like that you're doing the same thing as me, yeah, just a different way. You're channeling it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You may not know you are, but you are. So, you know, I mean, I've used the term in some interviews that it's a, it's a way to connect to your soul. Mm -hmm. You're just connecting to your higher self, that aspect of you that always has been, always will be. Yep. And is, you know, it's always there to communicate to. I mean, you know, if we're going to uh, incarnate into physical form, which it seems like we do, we do uh, then obviously, you know, there's going to be a disconnect. And, um, you know, it's all you're really doing is bypassing that disconnect and, and bringing that aspect of you through. But this disconnect is here, though, for us to have this human experience. Mm -hmm. Yes to all that. <laughs> yes to all that. <laughs> Good. Yeah. 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 No, that's true. Mm. It's true. And, and again, it's like we're constantly evolving in that direction, you know, to, to seeing what you just said in the purest way that we can as human beings. And that's what I think I'm noticing too. It's like a constant, you know, you think you get it and then right. you learn more and then it deepens and you learn more and it deepens. So do you think, you know, when you do your third book, haha, yeah, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. going to happen. Of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. I just said it like that because I just don't want you to freak out. Yeah. Um, but you do your third book. Um, you know, there's just, you, don't you see it sometimes as books just falling from the sky? There's mm -hmm. just that much information. Well, I see that it's already been written. That's that's what it is. Oh, right, yeah. I yeah. see that it's already been written. I think that's that's why these books are just sort of like flying out like the way that they are mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the information is there and it's just mm -hmm. like me and my little human self like trying to catch up <laughs> <laughs> the whole time and get it down. Um, yeah. But it's, it's already been written, yeah. It's going to be so amazing to see you go on this journey now. I mean, you've, you've got so many amazing, great things to do. And I think, you know, it's one step at a time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being being kind to yourself yeah. on this journey as well. Yeah, yeah. A lot of patience too. A lot of patience. Do you suffer from not having much patience? Yeah. 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 We all do though, don't we? Well, because you see, you see, you feel what you can do. You feel the potentials that are there. Yeah. And that's, again, just being in tune with yourself and noticing, you know, having self-awareness. Mm -hmm. 
and mm-hmm. uh it's mm-hmm. it's not an ego thing but it is no, no, you no. know like you can sense things you can sense your direction and um when you sense that direction uh then yeah it is hard to to be patient because you, you want it to you happen want, yeah but, but everything's in its right time isn't it well yeah yeah and i i've got a bit of a a, a clarity about that in the past couple of days too is that you know don't push yourself too much you, yeah you well you got to you got to see that it's all it's all happening in the right steps in the right order well yeah. it's like you know how, what if we are trying to do this documentary just even six months ago, it mm-hmm. wouldn't may- maybe have even been the right timing for you, right. let alone me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And for everyone else as mm-hmm. well. Everything's at the right time yeah. that it's yeah. supposed to be. Yeah, definitely. Sucks though, don't it? Yeah, sometimes it does. <laughs> it does. Well, like, we have it now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but but it's something you were saying as well, and I'm just going to add to it. No matter what you do, no matter what you do, Anything, it's always leading to the path of, of going uh, 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 the same path we're all on, which yep. is which is re-remembering who we are, or, or coming from love, coming from love, or, or, or mm-hmm. how uh, what would you do in the present? What would love do in the present moment now mm-hmm. towards yourself and someone else? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's the end of the interview. No comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm getting it. Um, you know, and I think. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I started channeling a, uh, a few years ago, and I've not really done much recently. But I think it's helped me to do this, to take this path with everyone, just mm-hmm. to understand where, it, where it's all coming from. And I, I agree with you, you know, taking the weirdness out of it. But you know, it, it, it seems to it wants to come out this way, mm-hmm. the way it comes out. Mm-hmm. And is that maybe so? You know, that we sit there. You know, we we, we start. You know, we, you don't talk another. You, you you are yourself in your channel. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe that's an agreement you had that you didn't want to change your voice you didn't want to you know do any anything else you might find it a bit strange you wanted to keep it as grounded and Mm -hmm. as normal as possible it used to be different my voice did change before what kind of voice was it Uh, i don't know it was um just softer or no it was just a different uh sort of accent a a very much like solara anra actually very much like that very much like that right um but it sort of took on different qualities as I right. as I sort of changed. But, um, but again, yeah, no, I do agree with you. It all it all connects in the end, and yet there's a specific quality to um, how we're doing it yeah. as we're calling it channeling. As we're calling it channeling, that's a mm. different energy because mm. it's. Uh, it's pure. I, I mean, there's there's a purity to it where. Uh, you know, you can look at a painting and you can feel that it's channeled. You can feel that it's from a different source. But uh, not everybody can really identify the qualities of that or the the message about it. Some people can. Some people can't. And there's other reasons why they can't as well sometimes. Maybe right. financially or something else, you know, whatever. They can't be seen to be aligned to something that's going to put yeah. people off or yeah. yeah I don't know it just you know there's different mediums of getting the same information well, yeah, yeah absolutely. that's how I see it where so, did that come from yeah well it came yeah. from myself so so the way that we're doing it mm-hmm. now here mm-hmm. is just like a more open way of sharing it yes. in words in words yeah in, in words that, yeah that's true and um what is the main message of your work would you say I think it's coming back to ourselves and ourselves that's it's not what it sounds like it's not this body it's not this name it's like who we are at our true nature like where we go back to where we come from um, which is source Mm -hmm. energy and so Mm -hmm. that's the fundamental and then after that once we build upon that it's you know it's getting in touch with the, the fact that we're connected to that it's not separate from us no. and i think that's that's a misconception sort of about channeling as well is that we're tuning into something yes mm-hmm. that's a really good point yes yes yep. but yeah, well it can seem like that sometimes it can't can it? seem like that sometimes but but it was interesting in your channeling because you channel source and it wasn't i didn't even know i i, I was un- unaware of what even name you were channeling sometimes i i always said to people i think it's unnamed yeah, but again, I know now it's not. It's source. It's the universe. It's God. It's the everything. 
-hmm. what is not what is not god what is not the source mm -hmm. everything is isn't it in mm -hmm. a sense mm -hmm. it's source having its experience so when you said to me you know when, when you said to me when you channel you know i you are me i am you that's the kind of that's the weird thing to get in your head in it we are mm -hmm. everything is one mm -hmm. yep so yep. when when these channelers uh, with that separate identity some sometimes like a future aspect or uh, a, a group of collective consciousness even that group is them it's <laughs> everything is one but it's but there it's is a specific flavor uh, yeah now how, but how do you term that again mm -hmm. do you remember yeah there was a metaphor that is used a lot it's about the the soup it's it's a it's a analogy about soup which is that um you know as human beings, we are a different flavor of that pot of soup. You know, we can count the the salt or the uh, thyme or the mm -hmm. basil or whatever mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. in the soup. That that's the different flavors. And um, but we don't count the molecules of water in the soup. It is a collective. You know, at that point in time. So as so-called channelers, what we do what some people are picking up on when they say they channel collective or they channel this individual or whatever it is, we're yeah. tuning into that yeah. specific flavor, yeah. but we still can't separate it from the whole. Right. So that's sort of the analogy, what I, what I think is just the best analogy ever. Yes, um, that, that really is. To describe it. So, yeah. so of course, you know, it's, n it's the way I see it is it's no different um, than what I'm really doing. It's just uh, a, d it's a different aspect. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and again, you know, you use your discernment when you listen to other channels and whoever resonates with you. Um, yes, because everyone's got their own teacher, haven't they? I mean, mm -hmm. all, all those parts of that soup, what mm -hmm. would you call it, the molecules of the soup, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Those aspects all have uh, a different way of expressing themselves, maybe. Right, right. And so, therefore, you know, we are, we are, we are here for different purposes, mm -hmm. as we was discussed in the documentary yesterday. That you know, there is a there is a life plan, but it's there's nothing there's nothing to say that that, that it's not set. Yeah. There's nothing we have to keep on track. There's mm -hmm. free will all the way along to change it. Mm -hmm. What if the life plan changes as you change it? I never asked that. I guess it does. I guess it does. I think that came out as well. Did it right? You put yeah. it. Oh, and just leading on to that. So you're, you know, you're very, very conscious channel in a sense. You you remember what's been said. Sometimes I, you know, I remember general directions. Sometimes I think it depends on. It's different every time. I'll put it that way. It's different every time, you, really. You did um, on the first one go really deep. Mm -hmm. That was that was that was deep. crazy. Yeah, yeah, but I did. I think I did ask you to kind of go in the back of the car seat mm -hmm. and just. It yeah. was happening already. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think just the intention and the whatever, you know, the questions yeah. that were going to come out, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it just, you know, put me there into that space. But um, no, I'm there. I'm, I'm listening. It just, it feels back. It feels like I'm really at the back. Yes. Um, muted, sort of. Yeah. Slowed down. Slow down. That's a good word for yeah. it. Yeah. How much are you into your teachings? How much do you live by your teachings that come through? Well, I do live by them. How much do I go to my book and study them? Not very often. Mm -hmm. But the, what I was told about that as well is, you know, because I am the one receiving them and transmitting them, that information is, is already there. It's, it's awakened in yes. a sense. So once that consciousness has seen itself and awakened to itself, then it's there. It's it can't be lost. It can't be forgotten. Okay. So that's the way that I see it. And um, but I have moments all the time where I'm just going about my life, whatever, and then mm -hmm. something flashes on, you know, and I think, oh, I forgot about that. I forgot right. about that. So. But I mean, even even having a copy of the book and kind of just being with the book, it's got mm -hmm. an energy as well. And the other channelers have said the same thing for their books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Right, <laughs> it right. really does. Yeah. yeah. There, and, and it's really cool to hear that feedback because, um, I, I, you know, I didn't tell people how to use the book. I, there were some, you know, suggestions of how I was told would be helpful. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, for the most part, people buy the book, they get it in the mail from Amazon, and they feel what they feel from it. And uh, what's cool is they're they're treating it like a little sacred part of their yeah. you know 
their life and um you know i have different friends of mine that you know have it on their uh nightstands and they open mm-hmm. up to it every day and mm-hmm. um and, uh, you know, one of my friends, too, she says it, it has eyes, it hears me, it feels me like it is it <laughs> like so she cool. really she really feels it. Yeah. And and uh, I really didn't expect, you know, I hoped for that sort of feedback, but I didn't expect it. Let me just add this and I'll probably add this in the interview. I just need to say this to you, that you, you are really into your work. You, you are living your path. Right? This is really what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I said to you in the, at some point, I said, do you, I think I said this, I'll ask you now though, you mm-hmm. know, do you ever think that you could get into a state where you walk away from your work? Where, you know, we have those moments, don't we? Of the doubting Thomas moments. Mm-hmm. No, I don't Good. think it's ever going to happen. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Um, I'll remind you if it does, don't worry. No, it's yeah. not going to happen. And the, the reason why I say that, it's not my choice. I mean, it right. is my choice in the sense that I had free will when I said yes to this. But I said yes to this because I know it's what I'm supposed to do. I have information that I can't forget. Um, there's no way that I would want to walk away from it, even if I was frustrated. Because why would you want to walk away from trust and guidance and like the path of least resistance and feeling good and feeling in alignment, there's no reason you would want to walk away from that. Unless you're extremely stubborn, then you might try, but then you're still going to get, you know, oh, hit with a ton of bricks. Yes. <laughs> so there's not really any way out. There's no way out, is <laughs> there's there? There's no way out. No. <laughs> no, that's so yeah. true. Once you've kind of pressed that switch and well, yeah. once you've, once you've, like, as you said, once you've, you know, agreed to say yes to it, mm-hmm. um, I, I agreed to say yes to it, and that's when it started to, to, to work for me. That's when the documentary mm-hmm. came into alignment. Yeah. But I did say that I wanted to be taken care of. I'm not doing this for nothing. Mm-hmm. I refuse to be a pauper. No yep. more monk lifestyle. Forget that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I did a bit of that too. You Good. Know? Yeah, a bit of, you know. Yeah. I'll do it, but you know you got to pull your weight. Yes, you gotta, exactly. You got to pull your yeah, weight, yeah, yeah. <laughs> universe. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And 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 there's you know I I say with this work as well. There's nothing wrong with making money from it. I've got no problem with that whatsoever. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, no problem. Well, it's a form of energy. Of course it is. It's yeah. a form of energy, and and it's not. Oh, I think the first book talks a little bit about money I think too. It could do. I, yes, think I think it does. does doesn't it? I think yeah. it does. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, you know, it's a co- it's one of those collective energies that, uh, you know, I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, collective consciousness. There's certain subjects in collective consciousness that um, mm. is harder to break through because, again, it's collective. Yeah. Yeah. So money is one of those. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. it's hard to almost have a pure relationship with money when uh, well, you know so much of our our collective is you know has blocks against it. We really do, don't we, some of us? No, we do. Yeah, yeah we do. But um, but you can create your reality. Yeah, you get to choose. You get to choose. Yeah, nothing to be fearful of, um, you know, just because... Well, what we at reality are you creating? What reality am what I What are you creating? asking for? I think I'm asking to be of service and also to be taken care of and to... Um, do what's in the path uh, of least resistance for me and to be supported in doing that you know do what I love to do and be supported and doing have that. fun and to have fun and and not to not to do something that I don't want to do just for money or or for other people I want to do everything that I do for myself and uh, because I, I've been taught that selfishness is the greatest form of self-love we have blocks around selfishness. We talk about we don't want to be selfish. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to hurt other people. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do that. And um, I think different cultures have different uh, levels of that. But I think where I live, too, you know, there, there's a lot of that sort of like be respectful, kind of be at a distance, you know. Um, yeah. But but isn't that true what you're saying, though, that when when you put yourself first, actually you're putting everyone else first. Yeah. Because yeah. when you're not putting anyone else first, you ain't putting yourself first. Right. Oh, did I say that wrong there? I don't know. <laughs> I, we, I got well, it. You, I got you got it. it, yeah. They got it. No, yeah. it's it's like the oxygen mask right. analogy. You know, if oh, you're yeah, going down, thing, yeah. you got to put your own mask on first. Otherwise, you know, people the next same, to you can't yeah. survive. So you mm-hmm. have to save yourself first. And this is the very same thing. Um, 
so we have to get out of this mindset that, you know, we have to put other people first all the time and take yeah. care of ourselves, learn about ourselves, be in a state of alignment with ourselves, and then, and then help others. Yes, and I, I love that you want to be of service to people. I think whatever you're going to do, I think most things are of service to people, aren't they? But mm -hmm. I mean, um, I think if you're not going to put that in there, then what are we doing yeah, it for? Yeah, but in, and it comes not from a place of forcefulness too, because the way that um, the way that we say that I want to be of service, yeah, it sort of sounds like I have to work really hard to benefit others, and the way that I see that is mm -hmm. maybe not. But maybe maybe a little bit too. Um, but the way that I see that is, you're in alignment with your path, and automatically at service. That's how I see it. Um, oh yeah, right. Well, that's the same. Yes. Yeah. So it's like you know, I'm doing um, this work, writing the books. It's easy for me. I'm not doing it for the people. Does it benefit them? Yes. Oh um, God, yeah. But but I I did it because source energy told me to I, I mean I said yes I'll be the conduit I'll do it but but the motivation um was for me and mm -hmm. it just expanded mm -hmm. and expanded mm -hmm. so that's how I see it you know would you ever see yourself doing you know stage work and workshops I'm and sure I would I'm sure yeah. I would does it scare you to, to think of that no no because I think that when that time comes it's going to be so natural and mm. it's going to be just me you know it's I going to be so. my own energy and my own yeah you know format and everything so and, I, I'm not worried about that with challenge.com we're putting you on a big stage yeah <laughs> true. but it would still be your space yeah. Yeah. yeah would you so you wouldn't see yourself working with um like some channelers, they do work with other channelers, but you would prefer just to do and build your own thing here right now. I think now. so. Mm -hmm. I think that, I mean, that's kind of what I do in, in all areas. Yeah. 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 I don't know. You know, it's, it's, I love sharing space with people and it, it's, it's the right, you know, it has to be the right thing. It has to be the right thing for both people. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, just like I was very adamant about how I would publish this book and, and what kind of energy was getting put into it. I wanted it to have my well, energy and that's everything. Yeah, this, you know, this new book's going to take you on a whole different journey yeah, as well, which right. is going to be really fun, right. fun for you and, uh, and everyone else. Um, yes, there was something really important I wanted to just touch on then as well. Um, Darn it, it's left my, my brain. But I mean, you mentioned it there, and I'll just go over it. You know, you, you, we create a reality. That's a really important thing just to point out here as mm -hmm. well, that we have to take responsibility at where we are right now. If, so, if there's something in our life that we don't like or we're not happy with, only we can change that. That's true. Yeah, we have to take responsibility for ourselves. And I think the more that we, you know, blame others, we blame whatever it's it's a way of taking um it's a way of not looking at ourselves that's what it is when we blame others and people even go to the extent of blame, blaming god and that's just a really like big illusion it's a really big illusion because if we're constantly like trying to put mirrors on other people and you know deflect from ourselves we're missing the whole point and so you know, that's, mm. that's what my whole journey was, you know, back in 2012, 2013, 2014. Um, I think my biggest lesson, you know, my daily mantra was yep. show me what I don't want to see. Show me what I need to see that I don't want to see um, or that I don't know. So it was like a constant, like, taking off the veils, taking off the filters. I just want to see everything pure as it is. So I can see... The, the real relationship between me and that person, the real relationship between me and that experience, whatever it is, so that you're no longer putting up all of these barriers around yourself where you can't see yourself. If, you, if you're trying to see your true self through other people, you're, you're just, you're blinding yourself. Yeah. If that makes any sense. And, and not being yourself around people as well. Well, right. Trying yeah. to um, be someone else because you think they're not going to like you. Yeah. You just, you have to see yourself first before anything else can make any sense. Right, right. Yeah. But some of us are quite resistive, aren't we? <laughs> Even well, yeah. when our body's talking to us, 
you know, and, and yet, you know, we may, you know, we may have people around us that are into spirituality and we're kind of there as well. They, you know, even to look at the alternative I, I, concepts, it's just something they don't want to do. Most mm -hmm. of people. Yeah. You know, just people, people, again, that's, I think that's just being in the middle of being confused, not really sure where to look or, yeah. um, but, but that's, that's where you start to, you know, say it's someone else, it's something else. Life is against me. What, what about whatever. asking, what about asking the source oneness God for help? Mm -hmm. Well, some people are too resistant to even do that, you know, but of course, mm. once you open that doorway, then that's when it flows in, but you have to say yes, it's free will here. So you have to say yes to that. You have to ask for that. So if, if, somebody is stuck in that place of spinning around in their own illusions about yeah. themselves and yeah. being a victim to their life, they have to be the ones to turn that around. Right. Somebody else from the outside can be a support system. They can offer guidance. They can say, try meditation. They can say, try this, try that. But they have to be the ones themselves to say yes to something and, and open some kind of door. Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. You know, I mean, you know, it, your work is very much about present moment. You, you know, mm -hmm. what's coming. Th even when I speak to your source, it's, it's you know, it, it enjoys more staying here now and answering questions that are re relevant to everyone that here now. Mm -hmm. But your book, this first book, still is very deep. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond that, way beyond that. Well, because present moment is now. That sounds like a synonym, but but when we say mm -hmm. when we say um, what you just said, you know, the book goes beyond just now, but, but now it's happening now. Yeah. <laughs> the, the past is happening yeah, now. It, yeah. We time. see here on earth, we see everything on a linear timeline right, yeah. and it's not that way. So that's why this conversation gets really trippy because, because, um, you know, as we did yesterday when we channeled and you asked some things and, um, and and they said to us let's you know let's stay here now what is important is right here now um that was in reference to all of that information is within this moment yeah so if people watching this now i was going to say if someone's watching this <laughs> people are <laughs> watching people are watching this right yeah um and they're thinking i really want to channel how do i channel so how do you mm -hmm. channel I think the way that it opened up for me is, first of all, I, I wanted to just let go. I wanted to open myself up and to, to be a conduit. So I said yes. You have to say yes first. If you have any sort of fear about it, that's going to be a block for you. So trust that the highest of light is with you. So have that, have that intention. That's how I start every meditation, every time I'm going to channel. I ask for the highest of light. And trust that it's there because you're part of that and you're connected to that. So, you know, I would say people just do not have fear. Have, you know, complete knowing that you're part of that source. So that was yeah. the, first, the first opening for me is I knew that I'm not separate. I knew that I'm not tuning into something that is separate from me. So there was already a knowing that you know, it's just about me sort of letting go and, and allowing. So the allowing is so, so important. And, um, for me, you know, when I started, I, um, I felt that energy come through my body and sometimes you'll feel that. Um, and I went and I, the way that I started channeling was on the computer. So I, I put my hands down on the keys, but it can be done. It can be done, done in many ways. Sometimes it was through, um, you know, drawing a picture. Sometimes it was through, oh, right, right. Uh, you know, words, you know, vocally. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of different ways to, to go about it. But I think the, the biggest thing is to not have fear, to, um, to allow and to have an intention for the highest of light to, to come through you. And, and how does someone follow their inner guidance? Well, not inner guidance, but I suppose it is. If someone's like, what is my purpose? What should I be doing? Mm -hmm. You know, you're speaking about you're living your purpose because, mm -hmm. you know, it's just what you really want to do. How can I find mine? Mm -hmm. Well, it comes from that connection between, you know, being, being uh, in alignment with yourself and asking the deeper questions of yourself. So I think to answer your question, um, how all of that information started coming out of me is because I was asking for it. 
you got to ask and you got to have a sort of a desire. The questioning is what brings it all to the surface. So I was asking really deep questions of myself, you know, have in not from a place if I need to know the answers right now, but show me through my experience. Yeah. You know, give me the give me the lessons as I need them. Was some of them quite hard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think some of them were. You know, in the beginning I had to trust. I had to trust that the information was coming through and it was right and it was accurate. So there was, you know, there was a little bit of a hang up in the beginning that I was sort of just very focused on every little detail and yes. is this true and, do, you know, should I research this and blah, 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 blah. And I was, I was in my head a little bit in, in the very, very beginning. But then the experience took over, the energy took over and I used that as my validation. So when I started channeling and that presence would come through, it's like you can't mistake that. I mean, you feel that. You can't mistake that. So I use that as validation, move into that. The message comes through, teaches you, and it's yeah, very – it's so simple. That's it's beautiful. So simple. That's beautiful. Well, look um, – we're going to link uh, Courtney's details in the description below. Your website is? Teachingsfromgod.com. Okay, now if you want to support The More Show, if you want to get a reading with Courtney, then I'd ask you if you could come through channeling.com forward slash Courtney, you'll be able to book Courtney there 24 hours. Uh, that the, your, your calendar is going to be on there as well, what, yep. what, what days you're going to be available. And it just supports what I'm doing as well as I travel across the world. Um, so... I think what we'll do, uh, I was going to get you to channel here, but I'm just going to show uh, some clips from the documentary that we've been filming. Uh, they call us channelers. And because there's, there's so much material there, right? You know, it's only, you know, only the best bits that I feel are the best bits are going to make it into the documentary. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put uh, some channeling uh, just towards the end of this video now. Um, well, I've, you know, it, it's crazy to be here right now with you, right? Mm -hmm. It still hasn't really sunk in, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with most of the channelers as well, you know, taking this journey across the world. And um, I think as, as time goes on, I reflect back and, you know, I, I think, wow, that was just the most amazing time ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I hope our paths uh, cross again. And I'm sure they will. Actually, I'm going to get you on my channel because I'm launching something soon, which I'm going to announce on my channel. And I'm going to get you on uh, as someone to dive deep with material mm -hmm. with. So you're going to come on and do some channeled uh, yeah. uh, shows That's with gonna us. That's going to be cool. That's going to be really gonna cool. That is going to be cool, yeah. Because let me just add this. Don't, don't you think... Well, oh, tell me whether I'm wrong or not, but that with channeling, it, it, it almost it wants you to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. It doesn't want to give you it on a silver plate. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you well, it's funny that you said that. Yeah, because in, in the second book that just came through, um, the main message was like, we're not going to spoon feed you anymore. You got to you gotta go deeper. You got to ask yourself. You got you to gotta pick up on the energy behind the words. You know, we're not just going to keep giving you you know, easy stuff. There's no 12 step process. You got to, no. you got to go within yourself. So yeah, no. that's very true. No, absolutely. What would you say then is the, I mean, we probably asked this, but let's just ask it again. What is, what is the most, what's most important to you right now about your work? What was there an important message you want to give mm. to the audience? Important message. I think soul purpose, soul purpose. That's, that's where we should be focusing on our sole purpose, all of this other stuff, the stuff that we do, the stuff that we accomplish, our jobs, that's not who we are. And so we have to really become clear on our sole purpose and go in that direction. And that could be many things, you know, I just, I don't waste my time with just random actions anymore. I, I'm only going to do something if it's going to be in alignment with that path. And we just, I think we just can't waste our time anymore. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> like you just gotta you gotta just do it yeah. yeah 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 that's what's been coming out for a lot of us i think yeah. hasn't it you've got to just do it and sometimes if that's more than one thing that you feel drawn to do go do it mm -hmm. you know i was having this conversation with with uh, uh, jacqueline mm -hmm. uh, who channels the marys yeah which you're really good friends with and she was like you know if that's what the options are coming through for that you want to do a few things well, well why not do them do you know right. what i mean and see which right. what, what, what what's best for you yeah. or what, what works it out. all connects in the you end. just got to do it yeah Absolutely. Well, listen, Courtney, thank you so, so much mm -hmm. for coming on the show right now. 
Uh, it's just yeah, been a pleasure been to to have your energy on here, and I, it's you know I just wish you all the best, which I don't need to do because it's all going to work out perfectly. But mm. I wish you all the best for everything you're doing and the lives that you're going to touch. So just thank you for what you do. Thanks for having me back on. It's a pleasure. Um, the 20th of November at 3.01 um, Minneapolis time. We're based in St. Paul right now doing this third and final interview. Thank you very much as well for coming through. Very appreciative. And we're going to be uh, all around the houses here like last time a bit. So the first question I've got for you, um, going to go back to a topic that we spoke about yesterday about the prophets. And in this country and many other countries, obviously Christian Christianity is a big religion. And many humans think of uh, Jesus Christ as a savior. Um, why do people think this way and is there another way of looking at Jesus Christ? Yes, dear ones. We are interested in speaking of this subject and we have in the past before because he was one that taught that it was not about him. It was about the teachings and the energy that he brought through. And the ones that were closest to him at that time understood this. It is only over time that you have misinterpreted or misunderstood some of these foundational teachings. He was very well aware that it was what was flowing through him that was the message, not him himself. He was very well aware of this. The main message that he was speaking to you and is speaking to you through the energy of the ages is that it is up to you to find the connection. It is up to you. And you misinterpret this, these messages and these teachings of the prophets, of the many prophets, because it is in your human nature to look for something, some power, someone that you can identify with your human senses to assist you. Human beings like to have this root or this foundation, this rock, because there is so much that is unknown to you that you do not understand about yourselves. And so it is attractive when you see a teacher, a leader, a so-called prophet that can assist you in these times of awakening, in these times of discovery, in these times of separation. And there has been separation for all of eternity on earth because, again, that is the veil. That is the veil. So no matter what, even in the times that Jesus was here and present on earth, in the physical, you would say, the veil was still present. The veil was still present. And so the messages that came through were of interest because it lessened the separation. It allowed those that were close to him and observed him to see the path of the light worker. You see, it's just a word. There's just a word. But there have been others since, you see. The energy of the Christ consciousness has been preserved has been preserved. He knew that it was not about him. It was the message. It was the message. So, as you are ascending and learning and growing, you have realized, more and more, many of you have realized, 
that it is not about the voice that delivers the message. It is the message itself. So look beyond what you see on the outside. Each and every one of you is carrying a message of divine wisdom to share. And it's up to you to translate that in the best way that you can. What is the difference between the so-called prophets of that time of Jesus and the so-called prophets of this time? There are many differences. In your world today, which has become so different. You have social structures that are more solidly, solidly in place. You have economic structures that are more solidly in place. You have a political system that is more solidly in place. There is more complexity to the situation Religion has become something in and, in and of itself. And so it becomes difficult to remind you what the foundation of the teachings of the prophets were in their original form. Because it was not about them, and they knew it. But it is you who takes on your own filters with your own human bias, and you make up stories about what you think that means. You make up stories about how to follow that teaching. And you, you even go to the extent of, of telling others that they must follow that teaching. They didn't intend for that. They did not intend for that. In the end, each and every one of them intended for oneness, intended for all-inclusiveness, intended for love. So what can we say to the human being who is in their bias? who sees through the lens of the structures that are present in human life today, we would say there is nothing wrong with them unless you choose to separate yourself from the teacher, you see. So you may allow yourself to learn from these scriptures or from these teachers, whoever it is or whatever it is for you. But in the end, you must see that it is not about them. It is about the message and the energy that they carry through with them. That is where the message is. That is where the enlightenment is. The moment that you begin to personify the divine in that human body, the moment that you do that, you lose the message. Although you can appreciate the message as that individual can be your teacher. Your teacher can be the Buddha. You can look for understanding and wisdom and enlightenment from the Buddha. But you understand at the same time that the Buddha lies within you. You see the difference. So whatever understanding or structure you choose, 
we would ask you to see that there is a connectedness there. See that you are one with that energy. If you are connected to Jesus, see it not as that man, but see it as the energy of Jesus that is part of you. And that can teach you and bring you light and healing and wisdom. Allow that energy to become part of your divine nature, part of your cellular structure. It needs to be a personal, personal communion. When you pray to these masters or to God, or to prophets, you must understand that it is important to have that connection to this master or to this energy. Understanding that it is part of you and not separate from you. If you are in the illusion that you are separate or that this energy or individual or master, if you will, is separate from you, then you cannot see the sacredness and the truth at that deeper level of understanding. So the doorway to the divine is through the connection between you and the divine. And to do that, it is through the heart and through asking and through devotion and through allowing and through again it is not from the mind it is it is through intention and simply knowing that this is all part of you it is nothing that is separate from you you are not invocating something that is separate from you. It is part of you. So that is the very long answer to that question. And just a very brief question. Then we all have the Christ consciousness within us then. Indeed. Okay. Thank you. Um, Obviously, there's been special times on Earth before, I'm guessing. But why is this time special right now, if it is? Indeed, it is a magnificent time, and yet we say it about every time. And so that is part of the joke of it, is that each and every moment that you are connecting with us, we would say, it is a beautiful day, it is a beautiful moment. And we would not say otherwise, because from this view, it is always a moment of, of sinking your teeth into juicy creation, we would say. And so, there is nothing but this moment. Let's get more specific on this. What more would you ask about this, we would say? We would say that the evolution of consciousness has increased in the sense that it is a bit like you know, in the winter time, you know, there is snowballs, you make a snowball. 
where there is winter time and there is snow. And when you continue to make it bigger and bigger, it becomes it becomes a mass size and it is a bit like that where when it rolls down the hill it begins to gain more snow and gain more momentum and it moves faster and faster. That is similar to the so-called human ascension or awakening process which is happening is the more of you that realize this truth of who you are the more momentum it gains and so It isn't about the numbers, it is about the energy of those numbers, you see. If you can be in that presence so powerfully, you can affect so many around you. If you can be in the presence of love as we are now, in this space which is so important and so essential, and so ascend it. If many, if many of you human beings can experience this and experience it frequently, we would say it would be so powerful to impact the consciousness of all. And it is not about trying to get others to do the same as you or to see the same as you we would say do not even bother about that there's nothing about this that is about conversion or 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 adopting any other viewpoints we would say it's about coming home to your authenticity in its purest form, unattached to, to any rule books, you see. Is this a different time? It is a special time, we would say, where we will use a metaphor for you again. When you are popping popcorn, in the very beginning, it might be only one kernel of popcorn that, that pops. And the more that pop over time, they assist each other, you see. So this time is interesting in the sense that more of you are popping at once rather than individually. And you are closer together, and so you are noticing that when you step into yourself and you become awakened to who you are and you share that with others and you share that freely, you will notice you are attracting many others around you of that vibration as well. So it is different in the sense that more of you are in closer proximity to each other and you are awakening and you are realizing and you are sharing more and that is special and unique but we would say evolution is always happening movement is always happening and so throughout all of time there have been many important pieces energies described as as human beings that have come forth to bring a message to humanity and now there are many many teachers many different beings that are coming together to work together there are more more and more of you which are assisting each other now instead of being scattered around the world you are you are coming together more so we would say it is fascinating to see this and to watch this and to be present for this. But we would say it is always a beautiful time and there is always ascension happening, there is always awakening happening, indeed.
Thank you. Thank you. So, um, hmm. So the people watching this documentary right now, uh, this is part of their awakening experience. They choose for it to be. This can be part of their awakening experience. Indeed. But as we always say, truth permeates when it is ready to permeate. Truth permeates when the being has chosen with free will for it to permeate. The messages itself are not the power. The energy behind it is the power. So it is interesting to see as we are delivering these messages. We can feel for each and every one of you that are listening to them and feeling them in this now moment. And we can say that truly it is beyond the words. It is beyond the information. Because some of you are realizing, maybe even for the first time, that it is not as daunting as it may look to step in. Step into their full power and authenticity. It is not as difficult as it looks. And also, you can feel for yourselves how freeing it is to be authentic. You are not changing anything about yourself. You are simply becoming more of yourself. We would say there's an energy that is being transmitted, a grand energy that is being transmitted. And that is the power of what we are sharing. That is the power of what you are sharing. So we would say to tune into that presence and to be aware of how that is manifesting within you and what inspiration does that give you? What does that trigger within you? Okay, thank you. And we've probably asked this question before, but in different ways. So I'm just going to ask it again for this final part, just in case we need it. Um, yeah, why do we keep coming back to Earth to separate ourselves from Source, only to re-emerge back into Source? We have such fun exploring this conversation, of course, because from that perspective, as you are a non-physical being and you are experiencing the joy and the, the decision, we would say, to re-emerge back into the physical, and you know what, your entire being is just exploding in the joy and excitement about it, there is no feeling of you do not wish for a certain direction you see you are not fearful you are not feeling obligated to do it it is simply because you feel it would be such a fun game you see and you do it because you see that it will give you such growth and such acceleration. And the whole joy of it is to have contrast, you see. What fun is it to be, to, to simply be all-knowing and, and, all, and part of all things. And you want, you want to express in a different way. And expression in the human form is so interesting because you get to you get to forget and you get to have the joy of of learning and experiencing everything for the first time and you pretend that you do not know 
you pretend that you do not know and then you remember and that is that is the fun in all of it that is the reason why you do all of it but the point about it all is that you do not have such conflict around it from that perspective before you emerged you would joke with us that you would not choose it if you knew what you were signing up for of course but it is not that way as you are choosing it there is no conflict about it in fact many of you you would say well I did not know what I was signing up for and of course you did of course you did but as we are speaking of it is all potentials it is all potentials but within those potentials there are agreements you see and those agreements you signed up for have allowed you to see from this perspective as a human being funneled through source energy and has allowed you this connection to to go back to that state of understanding even as a human being you see the greatest form of this journey is the journey of discovery as a human being of, of who you truly are where you came from to discover that and then to channel that wisdom through you that is the most accelerated human experience that there is without re-emerging back into the non-physical first of course so if you can do that you are accelerating even more even more even more even more you do it for the joy of it not because you thought it would be good for you not because something else thought it was good for you no because you thought it was good for you in fact you knew it would be good for you and you wanted to do it there is no obligation in this you saw the possibilities there and you said i'm ready for it and does that answer then um that if we're part of god you know why do we have to learn anything yes indeed because you want the expression of diversity you want to express in many many ways to see through the eyes of god in many many ways if you are source energy you want to express in all variations of source energy you see this just happens to be one of them life we talk about life with a capital l because life is beyond your human life life is is the wholeness of of expression and that is also in the non-physical as well and so wh- why would you want that because it is fun because it allows you to express in a different way because what is the joy in knowing when you can unknow and then know again you like it <laughs> that is the simple answer you like it you choose it and you might not understand why you would choose it but we will promise you when you go back well truly you are not going back but when you reemerge and it all makes sense to you again then you can quote us on that one